So we're still looking at integration by parts. We're going to look at some more examples that get a little bit more complicated. So the first one we've got is the integral of x squared sine x. Now if I look at the integral of x squared sine x, I'm going to be, I'm going to say let u be equal to x squared and dv be equal to sine x dx. du is then 2x dx and v is cos x. It has to be minus cos x. So using the formula that's u times v, so it's minus x squared cos x minus the integral of v du, which is minus cos x times 2x dx. Right, let's just tidy that up a bit. Minus x squared cos x plus 2 times the integral of x cos x dx. Now, this is no, not a standard integral at the moment. We can't just quickly integrate it using one of our standard integrals, but hopefully you recognize it. Looks like a great candidate for integration by parts. So we're going to do integration by parts twice in this example. Now, I just want to say I know there's a method using a table where you just plug things in and write the answer down. I'm not going to teach the table because I want to teach where it comes from and why the answers are and why the table works. Because if you're going to use a table, you might as well just use an online tool to integrate without any understanding. So here we go. I'm going to now do integration by parts again for this portion. So the other portion stays the same. Minus x squared cos x plus 2 times. Now let's take a look. Now I've already assigned your u and v. So I need to use different letters. I can use p or q or I'm just going to use a capital U. Let capital U be equal to x then du is dx, and dv is cos x dx, which means that v is then sine of x. So then this becomes u times v, so it's x sine x, minus the integral of v du sine x dx. So now we have a standard integral and we can integrate that. That's minus x squared cos x, plus 2x sine x. I've got minus 2, the antiderivative of sine x is minus cos x, so I've got plus 2 cos x plus my integration constant c. So we had to use integration by parts twice. But we could see from our start to our next step, the integral seemed to be a little bit better, but not there yet. But then with our second integration by parts, it became a standard integral. Right. x squared minus 1 times e to the power x. Again, I'm going to say let u be equal to the first part, x squared minus 1. It doesn't always work out that way, but at the end of this video, I will show you some ways to how you can choose your u and your v confidently dv is then e to the power x dx. So du is 2x dx and v is e to the power x. So using my formula, that gets me to u times v. So it's e to the power x times x squared minus 1 minus the integral of v du. So it's e to the power x times 2x dx. So just want to tidy that up. Minus 2 times the integral, I'm going to write x first, x times e to the power x dx. Now this one we've seen before. This was in our first video on this section. We looked at finding that integral using integration by parts. So you're going to have to do integration by parts again. But now we've already seen how to do it. So that's from a previous example. And we get that as being integration of x times e to the power x is x times e to the power x minus e to the power x plus c. And that we got from a previous example. Now, if we didn't do that example, you would do integration by parts twice again to get it to work out. Now, here's one of the other ones. We haven't seen any of this kind. Combining e to the power x with sine of x. Now, for this one, we can choose u and v either way. Both works out. I'm going to say let u be equal to e to the power x 
and dv equal to sine of x dx. Now this is another special case, and you'll see shortly why. du is then e to the power x dx, and v is minus cos x dx. So this integral becomes u times v, so minus e to the power x cos x, minus the integral of v du, so it's minus cos x times e to the power x dx. Let me just tidy that up. That's minus e to the power x cos x plus the integral. I'm going to write e to the power x in the front. It doesn't make a difference. It's just for convenience sake. Now, what I want you to notice is it didn't look like we simplified matters at all. We've got a, we had a e to the power x sine x in our original question. Now I've got an e to the power x cos x. So matters did not get simpler. But you'll see if we do integration by parts again, you'll see how the circular argument is going to help us. So let's take a look. Let capital U be equal to e to the power x again, and dv be equal to cos x dx. Then du is equal to e to the power x dx, and v is sine x. Then that portion becomes minus e to the power x cos x stays the same, plus u times v, so it's e to the power x sine x, minus the integral of v du, which is e to the power x sine x dx. Now what I want you to notice is now I'm right back where I started. So it looks like we made no progress at all. It just looks more complicated than what we started with. But take a look at the following. If I say to you, now there's a lot of stuff going on here, but let me just look at something else. If I say to you A is equal to B plus C minus A, because that's what we've got here. I've got this integral of e to the power x sine x dx on both sides. Here it's got a minus, there it's got a plus, and I've got two other terms. To solve for A, you will just add A on both sides and have 2A is then B plus C, which means A is just a half B plus C. So this is what we're going to do. So I'm going to use the next page for this. This is where we ended. We're going to add that on both sides, so we'll have two of them. e to the power x sine x dx is then e to the power x sine x minus e to the power x cos x. You can take e to the power x out as a common factor. It doesn't make a difference. So if I want one of them, then the integral of e to the power x sine x dx is then going to be a half, and I'll take e to the power x out. Like I said, it doesn't make a difference. Sine x minus cos x. There we go. And because we're integrating, that's our integration constant C. So it seemed like we were going around in circles, but it suited our need and we got there. So this is one of the strange cases that you must look out for when using integration by parts. So just in summary, if we give it in the format x to the power with the e combined with the e, a sine or a cos, then I let that x to the power be u. Whereas if I'm given an x to a power combined with a lin or an inverse trig function, and in the next video we'll look at an inverse trig function, what I then do is let the x to the power n dx be dv rather. That'll suit my purpose. And in this last case, we just saw it. You can actually try it both ways, but I let u equal to e, the e and then the sine is the dv.